Would you take the red pill or the blue pill? Those of you who've been watching my video channel for a while will know that I don't believe in God or any kind of supernatural reality. Nature itself is super enough for me. I can be particularly scathing towards Christianity, I guess partly because that's the religious system that I know best, but also because I think that the Christian mythology is particularly dangerous in terms of the view of reality that it promotes and the social structures, political structures and behaviours that it supports and or promotes. But I'm not going to go into all of that again today. However, Christianity is not a monolithic structure. There are many diverse expressions of Christianity in the world today, as there always have been. So many and so diverse, in fact, that it seems inappropriate to put them all under the same umbrella. At the one extreme, for example, you have Pope Francis and the Vatican approving the blessing of same-sex couples, at least under some circumstances. The Catholic Church and other mainstream churches argue that there's no conflict between Christian faith and science, including, for example, the concept of evolution. So this is the more liberal branch of Christianity. It's worth noting, though, that the Catholic Church will still not ordain women, although the Anglican and other churches do, of course, though not without a fight. On the other hand, or the other extreme, you have the very noisy evangelical churches, especially in the USA, which are very vocal in their condemnation of homosexuality and pretty much everything else, and who insist on creationism, and so on endlessly, endlessly and tediously unliberal. While I have trouble with even the underlying fundamentals of Christian mythology, uh, and note that that's what I call it, they don't, it's clearly the more conservative and, dare I say, wacky branches of Christianity that really get my blood boiling. It also sometimes, though, frankly makes me laugh. Watching some of these self-proclaimed evangelists interpreting contemporary music can be hilarious. Apparently, for example, if you go to hell, the demons will be singing Rihanna songs to you. After all, those lyrics leaked into the world from demons via Rihanna. Taylor Swift, of course, practices witchcraft, in which case, all power to her, I say. Considering the various religious traditions as mythological lenses through which to view and understand the world, give me wicker over Christianity any day. When I became a Christian in my late teens and on into my early twenties, I became involved with the charismatic movement within the Anglican Church and also had contact with charismatic Christians from many other denominations, Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, all of them. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I mention the charismatic movement, this was a movement within the mainstream churches that was heavily influenced by the Pentecostal revivalist churches that we now largely associate with the evangelical movement, particularly in the USA. It sought to capture the renewal elements in these movements and bring it into the mainstream churches. It included such things as speaking in tongues, being blessed by the Spirit, you know, that falling over thing that you might see in today's evangelical churches? We called it in those days being slain in the spirit. Ah, of course, prayers of deliverance from demons, all that stuff that you might see today in a TV evangelist show. Just as my rational mind wouldn't let myself be a biblical fundamentalist, it also wouldn't let me accept these demons as real either. Secretly, insofar as they had any reality at all, I regarded these demons as psychological issues, psychological structures or personality structures that were being personified. I couldn't admit this to the others in the group, of course. Looking back, though, I do wonder whether others within the group were actually doing the same. It always seemed to me that the devil and his hordes of demons was the real power in the world and that God was seemingly impotent against these forces. 
Oh, sure, at some point in the future, in his own good time, you know, no hurry at all, God would step in and smite the devil and all his demons and save us all. Why not now? Well, that was all a mystery, wasn't it? In the meantime, we were all apparently being attacked by Satan and his minions on every side, and still are, apparently, in music, via movies, books, video games. Don't you dare read Harry Potter. The devil sure seems to be the man. The world can be a pretty scary and dangerous place. But if you aren't scared now, you sure as hell will be if you embrace evangelical Christianity. You suddenly find yourself surrounded by unseen demonic forces on all sides, by massive interlocked webs of evil. This is the real world that will be revealed to you if you embrace this particular brand of Christianity. Once you choose to engage in this battle, the actual real world problems will no longer demand your attention. It becomes much more important to battle the evil Satanists such as Stevie Nicks and J.K. Rowling than to fight, you know, world poverty. I don't know how familiar you are with the Matrix movie and game franchise. In the original Matrix movie, Neo, Keanu Reeves' character, is given the choice of swallowing either the blue pill or the red pill. If he swallows the blue pill, he can continue to live out his life within the Matrix in a, a world much like our own actual world. If he swallows the red pill, though, the illusion of the Matrix will be shattered, revealing the real world in which machines rule the world. And these machines used human bodies as living power sources, basically batteries. The evangelical Christian movement is offering you a red or a blue pill. You can either take the blue pill and continue living in this illusory world, or swallow the red pill and see the world as it really is, ruled by Satan and overpopulated with all his demons. I'll take the blue pill, thanks.